Hello. Today we're going to read Curious Critters Marine, the third in the Curious Critters series by David Fitzsimmons. David wrote something as an introduction that I'd like to read to you before we get to the story. Deeply curious. Oceans cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface, yet we have explored less than 5% of their waters. Large land animals capture our imaginations daily. Strangely, however, few, few of us know much about the equally, if not more, amazing animals in and around the sea. This book, the third in the Curious Critters series, explores a handful of incredible ocean inhabitants. By gazing upon these unique creatures and by hearing what they have to say, we may better understand the coasts, reefs, and deep waters of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. May this book whet your curiosity and these pages become your snorkel, fins, and mask. Dive in. A wet world of wonderful critters awaits you. The first animal he has is the rosate spoonbill. Forks are fine, but nothing beats a good spoon. I don't mean your simple silverware. I'm talking about my super sensitive spoonbill spoon. You see, my paddle-shaped bill is covered with nerves. As I wiggle my unique beak back and forth in the water, I can feel small animals hiding in the mud and sand. When I, when I detect fish, shrimp, or insect larvae, and other mini morsels, I snap my dipper shut and eat them up. Best of all are shrimp. The more I eat, the rosier my feathers become. The muddy waters of my mangrove are calling. My table is set. Time to use my super spoon. That's the rosate spoonbill. Next we have the gray angelfish. Swim so happily, angelfish, give your little fins a swish. Twist and turn within the reef, nibble sponges with your teeth. From the eggs that you will lay, larvae hatch within one day. Freely floating in the sea, eating plankton, hungrily. Grow so swiftly, little fry, find the reef as time goes by. There you clean off other fish, making parasites your dish. Hide so quickly, watch your back, predatory fish attack. Flick your body oh so fast, flip your tail, and dart on past. That's the gray angelfish. Here we have the Atlantic horseshoe crab. Old? You bet. Well, not me, I'm young, but my relatives swam in Earth's seas long before dinosaurs were around. And you don't survive 450 million years without all kinds of tricks, which, thankfully, my ancestors passed on to me. Take my strong senses, for instance. I'll bet you can spot my two large compound eyes, but did you know that I actually have nine eyes and that I can see with my tail? I can also feel things with 100,000 tiny pegs covering my body. How about protection? Well, my hard shell and sharp spikes discourage most predators from attacking me, as I scoot along the ocean bottom looking for clams and worms. And if I get flipped upside down, well, I just use my long tail to help me roll back over, right side up. Why, with these old survival tricks, I'll bet my descendants will be around for many years to come. That's the Atlantic Horseshoe Crab. Then we have the American Lobster. This one is blue, that's interesting. Let's hear, read about it. Ask any sailor, dockhand, or civilian. I doubt they'll know I am one in two million. A happy mutation, a change of one gene, colored me blue, not brown or dark green. As I grow bigger, I molt my old shell. A new exoskeleton protects me quite well. If spotted, however, by cod or by seal, I'm back to my burrow. No blue lobster meal. Then out of my hole in the deep of the night, my antennules smell something. It's seafood delight. Upraised and all ready, my pinchers then grab delectable dishes like fish, clam, and crab. So cobalt and curious by light of the day, my brilliance makes seafarers readily say, forget pirate treasure and go find for me a one in two million blue gem of the sea, the American lobster. Here we have a full page spread of the loggerhead sea turtle. Phew! When I think back to the day I hatched, it makes me tired. With a hundred of us struggling to get out of our buried nest, sand and flippers were everywhere. 
Then I saw the moon reflecting off the ocean. So I sprinted to the surf as fast as I could to avoid crabs, snakes, and raccoons. Hitting the waves felt so good, I dove in and let the undertow pull me from shore. Then I began swimming. I paddled for two days, non-stop, until I reached a mat of floating sargassum weed. I plan to stay here for quite a while. There's plenty of food, such as fish eggs, crab larvae, and the sargassum weed itself. Plus, I can hide from hungry fish and gulls. When I'm older, I'll fire up my flippers and head back towards shore again. But right now, I think I'll just hang out here and wait for some lunch to float towards me. That's the loggerhead sea turtle. Here we have the California Sea Cucumber. Comedy Night at the Sand Bar, featuring sea cucumber. A crab, a shrimp, and a sea cucumber begin arguing about who feeds best along the ocean bottom. Watch this, says the crab, as she scuttles over to a piece of decaying fish lying on a rock. She devours the morsel immediately. Whoa, says the shrimp, you're quite a bottom feeder. Not to be outdone, the shrimp eats a worm wriggling in the sand. Impressive, the crab exclaims. You're quite a bottom feeder too. Bah! That's nothing, boasts the sea cucumber. He then pulls water into his rear end, pushes it into his long water lungs, and squirts it back out. The crab and shrimp think it's cool how the sea cucumber breathes with his back end, but they point out, we were talking about feeding, not breathing. I know, insists the sea cucumber. When I pulled the water, which was filled with algae, into my lungs, I ate the algae with my rear end. I guess that makes me the real bottom feeder. The California sea cucumber. On this page we have another of my favorite birds, the tufted puffin. I love getting all dressed up, putting on my best black feathers, brightening up my bill, growing two feathery plumes, all for my lovely lady. And each year she does the same for me. You see, during the winter, when we're off on our own, we don't look so glamorous. But in the spring, we get all spiffed up, meet at our nesting site, and prepare to raise a new chick. First, we dig our cliffside burrow a little deeper. Then my gorgeous gal lays an egg, which we take turns sitting on. Finally, a month and a half later, out comes our cheerful baby. To keep our hungry one happy, we fly out to sea where we chase fish, chase fish underwater. We often catch nine or ten, which we carry home all lined up in our bills. Back at the nest, we feed our little feather ball for about a month and a half. And then one night, ta-da, our courageous young puffin walks out of the burrow, leaps off the cliff face, and heads out to sea. I know, such a sudden departure seems kind of sad, but it's okay. My mate and I will soon fly away too. Then next spring we'll both get back together all dressed up and ready to raise another beautiful baby. That's the tufted puffin. Here we have the black sea bass. Brr! Nantucket's nice in the summer, but in the winter, no thank you. I prefer to head south. Each year I migrate 400 miles, seeing amazing things along the way. In October, I head towards the edge of the continental shelf. That's where the water starts to get really deep, over a mile to the bottom. In January, staying along the edge of the cliff, I swim southwest to Hudson Canyon. This enormous gorge is teeming with sea life. Corals, sponges, anemones, crabs, lobsters, dolphins, whales, and countless fish. Finally, in March, I stop swimming when I reach the waters off the Virginia coast. But almost as soon as I arrive there, winter starts to let up, so I speed my way back along the same scenic path to Nantucket, arriving in May for spawning. That's the black sea bass. Here we have the Hawaiian reef hermit crab. Aloha! I'm so glad you could come to my housewarming luau. I've been looking for a new home for at least a month. Circling around and around the reef, I checked out every open shell I could find. None seemed right, yet I was growing bigger and bigger. Then yesterday, while I was tearing into a piece of decaying fish, I noticed one of my neighbors moving out of this spectacular spiral. Immediately, I was taken with the trendy notch for my eye stalks, the twirly roof, and the trim of green and red algae. In terms of square feet, it's a perfect fit. I can pull myself back inside comfortably and close the front door with big ol' lefty. So, start strumming your ukulele. It's time for a luau. That's the Hawaiian Reef Hermit Crab.
On this side, we have the Cushion Sea Star. It appears it wrote a little song. I will try to sing it, but uh, forgive my off-key tunes. Look at me, a bright sea star, out beyond the big sandbar, crawling in the shallow sea, tiny tube feet carry me, out to join a galaxy of sea stars that look like me. I can smell with my tube feet lots of food for me to eat, sponges, worms, and crab larvae raked in piles down under me. Then my stomach, inside out, eats the food, plus sand, no doubt. Tough and bendy is my skin, that's my exoskeleton. Tiny eyes adorn each arm, helping me avoid most harm. If my arms get injured, though, new appendages I grow. That's the Cushion Sea Star. Here we have the hooded nudibranch. I'm quite fashionable for a slug. From my sheer dress to my eye-catching hat, I'm nothing but flair and finesse. The first rule of gastropod fashion is pay attention to your feet. I have found that my stomach foot looks stunning on green. So I plant myself on the most fabulous kelp I can find. Even though my snaily sisters say shells are all the rage, I think gills are more graceful. So I wear them all down my back. Quite versatile, I can slip them off if predators attack. My hat, however, is my most distinguishing design. Tastefully trimmed with tentacles, my fishnet hood is simply fetching. When prey come my way, I close my cap and pull them to my mouth. Darling, I always dine in style. That's the hooded nudibranch. On the right side, we have the calico crab. Oh, sure. Whenever there's trash down here, call in the crab. Come clean it up, garbage guy. Grr. It never stops. Rotting redfish. Where's the rubbish runner? Spoiling sponges. Oh, Sandman. Atrophying algae. Jump on it, junk jockey. Moldering mollusks. Yo, Garbo. Grr. Garbo? That one really gets me. I'm the one down here devouring loads of decaying debris, and nobody applauds my effort. Without recyclers like me, can you imagine what the ocean would look like? Why, we'd be wallowing in whale waste and covered in crumbling kelp. That's the calico crab. Here we have the red lionfish. I'm the new king of the reef, and I'm coming after you. The thing is, you probably won't even see me. While you are diddling among the corals, sponges, and rocks, I'll be sneaking up on you. My huge mane-like pectoral fins will camouflage me against the reef and hide my caudal fin back there, stealthily pushing me towards you. If you happen to notice my approach, don't even think of coming after me. I have venomous spines all along my fins. Go ahead, try to touch me. You'll be the one roaring in pain. That's the red lionfish. Here we have the lined seahorse. Howdy, welcome to Seagrass Ranch. We're glad y'all could join us. How about I show you around? We don't have any set meal times here at the ranch. Just wrap your tail around a plant, stay hidden, and enjoy a seafood smorgasbord of tiny shrimp and other crustaceans. As little critters swim by, snap out your snout and suck them in. Delish. Sleeping arrangements are pretty simple here too. Just hitch yourself to some seagrass and kick back. We'll see y'all at sunrise, bright-eyed and curly-tailed. Each morning we start the day a-dancing. Grab your partner, hold tails, and swing round and round. Yeehaw! Finally, y'all be careful. A few predators, like turtles, fish, and rays, lurk round Seagrass Ranch. So, hide yourself well. Change your color a bit to blend in, and y'all will be just fine. Thanks for joining us at Seagrass Ranch. Y'all come back now, you hear? That's the lined seahorse. Here we have an interesting creature, the candy stripe shrimp. Most creatures of the ocean fear the sea anemone. Its long, stinging tentacles make it quite an enemy. How fortunate, however, that I can call it home. Throughout its fearsome stingers, each day I freely roam. And as it calmly eats things, whatever it deadly taps, all round its little mouth parts, I nibble on its scraps. And talk about protection. No hunter catches me. 
They fear my faithful bodyguard, my friend, an enemy. That's the candy stripe shrimp. Here we have the painted frogfish. Uh, no, I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting here looking like a sponge and... Well, okay. I might have been wiggling my baited fishing rod above my head. So what? It's not like I was trying to lure a prey. I mean, um, I certainly wasn't going to... All right, I admit it. I crept along the bottom using my leg-like pectoral fins to find the perfect spot for fishing. And I did try to camouflage myself like a sponge. And I have been waving my white-tipped dorsal spine all over the place. And yes, I certainly will gulp down whatever animals try to take my bait. See, I really wasn't doing anything except fishing. The painted frogfish. And on this side, we have the pencil urchin. Mission control, coral reef here. The urchin has landed. We copy it down, urchin. Exploring coral reef, mission control. Tiny tube feet extended, commencing to walk. Daylight here, headed for protection, searching for a rocky crevice. Copy that, urchin. Watch out for predators, especially triggerfish. Roger, mission control. Spines providing some protection, but will seek refuge until nightfall. Exploring the reef, but no crack for hiding, although lots of colorful coral, swaying sponges, and fabulous fishes. All kinds of algae, too, including coralline pink. Extending my horn beak below to commence feeding. Roger that, urchin. Better fill your tank before docking. Copy that, mission control. This is one small step for urchin, one giant reef for sea kind. That's the pencil urchin. And here we have an interesting bird, the double-crested cormorant. You can find this throughout the United States. My wife and I have enjoyed photographing these birds over the years. Air, land, water, I do it all. But can you guess where I perform best? Sure, I can fly, but my heavy bones and small flappers make getting airborne a bit of a chore. And I can walk okay, even with my big feet. In the water, however, I'm quick as a fish. I love to dive, sometimes 25 feet deep and I can stay under for more than a minute. I dip and dodge all along the bottom looking for food. My wide webbed feet allow me, to pu allow me to push through the water, and my long neck lets me poke my head into all kinds of places where prey can hide, behind rocks, around coral, and into plants. When I catch small fish, I just gulp them down underwater. But for big fish, I take them to the surface, flip them in the air, and swallow them head first. Yummy. That's the double-crested cormorant. On this side, we have the giant Pacific octopus. If you called me an egghead, you'd be correct, but not because of my bulb-shaped mantle. That's my body. I'm an egghead because I'm smart. I'm the most intelligent invertebrate on the planet. To show off at parties, I solve puzzles, open jars, and find my way through mazes. To survive in the wild, I'm even craftier. I change colors and textures, squeeze through holes the size of your thumb, smell with my suckers, and break into shells with my hard beak, scraping tongue-like radula and deadly saliva. Pretty extraordinary, eh? That's the giant Pacific octopus. Then we have the upside-down jellyfish. Welcome to my carnivorous garden. Most jellyfish move freely in the water, but I plant myself on the bottom in a mangrove forest. There, I cultivate my garden, growing plant-like algae inside my body. I provide them with nutrients and make sure I sit in the sun all day, where they can produce food for themselves and for me. Even though I tend my algae garden well, it doesn't supply enough food for me to live on. So, I also go fishing. I roll the edges of my bell in and out, stirring up the water. As tiny animals come into contact with my arms, I sting them, and of course, eat them. If life gets difficult in the mangrove, I can always move my meat-eating garden somewhere else. I just turn right side up and use my bell to swim away. But soon enough, you'll find me back on the bottom, in the sun, and upside down. The Upside Down Jellyfish.
And that's the end of our book. I hope you enjoyed reading Curious Critters Marine with me. If you want to take a look at some more of David's work, you can check out his website at curious-critters.com, where you can buy some books and other merchandise related to the Curious Critters. Thanks for joining me.